guys, it's everyone's favorite girl gamer, Lorenda Fox, aka the Fox Tato, and I'm here with another one of my book reviews. So, today I'm going to be reviewing Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. Now, notably, this book was written by somebody who was in college whenever they wrote the book, and it was part of their, um, like, the, basically their idea for a, uh, a novel, and it, it was kind of like their final exam. So, um, this book is pretty well written. It's about a, uh, a woman named Christine who loses her memory due to some sort of accident is all I'm going to say because if I tell you how she lost her memory then it's going to ruin half the book for you. So uh, spoilers will be at the end. So if you decide to, um, to watch this video, the last 30 seconds of this video, as always with my book reviews, are going to contain all the spoilers for this book. If you've already read the book, I've got some questions that I normally ask my audience to comment, and yeah. So I'm reading the top 40 um, psychological thriller slash horror movies, I mean uh, slash horror movies, horror books, and um, this was on, next on my list. So this book is written from the perspective of Christine. Christine is a... Uh, basically a mental patient who has amnesia. She's living at home with her husband, whose name is Ben. And this this book is, uh, it's basically her journal. So she keeps a journal every single day, and she's seeing a doctor about this. Her, his name is Dr. Nash. So Dr. Nash is treating her amnesia. And the first three words that you, uh, that you see whenever she starts reading her journal is don't trust Ben, which is her husband. So that makes this a wonderful read. This book is um, it's very violent towards the last bit of it. Whenever you get to it, it's written in parts. So whenever you get to part three, it becomes a very violent book. It becomes one of the books that has like a, a really suspenseful ending. Like, the last, I think, 50 pages of this book are nothing but high suspense, high drama. It's really good, in all honesty. It kept me awake. I read this book in three hours. Yeah, I read this book in three hours. Once it got started, it took me about two days on and off to get it started. I read through like the first two or three chapters and whatever while I was on break at work and um, after that it was an absolute page turner. I literally had insomnia one night, stayed up the entire night reading this book. So this is the part where I'm going to tell you guys that if you don't want to know how this book ends and if you actually are planning on reading this book, you need to turn the video off right now. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to do that. Do, 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 do. Okay, so if you're still watching, then you've probably either gotten bored, or you already know how this book ends, or you don't want to read it, and you want me to just tell you how this book ends. So she got in her accident because she was cheating on her husband, and decided that it would be a great idea to go fuck some random guy who pay was she was having the affair with, and um. Her husband ended up leaving her at a mental institution because she couldn't remember anything more than like 10 or 15 seconds. And it was like, it was crazy. And she was fucking psycho. So whenever she went to the mental institution, her husband actually divorced her because he didn't, he like, he couldn't stand to see her like that and she didn't remember who he was anyway. So um, whenever she got picked up, from the mental institution and brought home, she did not go home with Ben. She went home with this other guy. And I'm trying to see what his name is in here because I... Adam, I think. Yes. No, Adam is her son. That's why it didn't sound... Yeah. I don't know. Mike. 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 Fuck Mike. So, Mike is the one that attacked her in the hotel, and, um, he beat her head, and, um, yeah, he was 
responsible for her accident. And uh, then Mike tries to rape her at the very end of this book. And she fends him off and ends up killing him. It was really good. So my question to you guys, if you have read this book, is um, what did you think about the plot twists in this? I mean, if you were like me, it, there's not really much of a way that it could get any more fucked up. But um, I personally thought that the writer could have done more with this. Like, it, this novel left me wanting. Because at the very end of this, you don't know if she gets her memory back completely. She gets it back for a little while, and then she goes to sleep at the end of the book. And you don't know if she remembers everything or not, because there is no more to read. I was kind of disappointed, in all honesty. So, this is my review of Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. Thank you guys for listening, and have a wonderful day. Go out and read this book. It's good.